Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's maybe been a while since uh, it either has been like a big broadcast, like breakout comedy. Um, I think, you know, obviously there, there have been uh, workplace comedies before, there have been uh, shows about teachers before, but I think, uh, you know, when Quinta brought this show to us, the, you know, the specificity uh, was really there. Um, you know, her mother had worked uh, for 40 years in the Philadelphia public school system as an elementary school teacher. So there was a lot of uh, real world material to mine for it. And I think, um, you know, people were just ready for like a big comedy that also does tackle issues, but isn't so in your face about it. It's not preachy. It's, you know, it's uh, every episode could have been turned into a very special episode, but by design is not, um, you know, we want it to be uh, a palatable, uh, but also just first and foremost funny. And I think uh, uh, people have really responded to that and and the grounded sort of sensibility of, of this particular workplace comedy. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been, especially like on Hulu, the next thing, the show airs on ABC, but then the next day it's available on Hulu. And I feel like all that attention and all the sort of press that our cast got to do with it uh, because of it and Quinta got to do because of it really just kind of like opened it up to so many more people. Like, I mean, that's the cool thing about being on broadcast is like you still have this giant um, sort of audience that you can tap into in a way that you might not necessarily be able to if you're on a cable or a streamer. Yeah, I feel like the the time like leading up to the Emmys and after the Emmys, like all of our cast has basically had to have second jobs promoting this show because of all the attention. Um, so yeah, they're troopers. I would say probably, I think for us, it all starts kind of like with the characters and the like, I the voice behind it, right? It's like, I feel like, you know, we do an animated show called Harley Quinn that's an animated comedy about, you know, maniac clown. But um, that show was really about, like, how do you find yourself after being in a really toxic relationship? So we try to just kind of, like, think about what's the core idea that is sort of universal. And then once we figure out what the emotional core is of the show, I think then it's like, let's make it as funny as we can make it. Yeah, and, and the lead, you know, the central character is always having a big readability factor, uh, you know, is important for us. Like with Harley Quinn, um, you know, that show has really become kind of a love story between Harley and Ivy. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, I think that's obviously a very universal subject. Um, love. Love. Yes, the universal character motivation. Um, and then, yeah, with Abbott, I think, you know, all, like every single character is rootable. Uh, like even even Ava, you know, who's sort of our, our, our uh, ineffectual, uh, you know, uh, leader of the school, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, having like 22 episodes of the show this year. And, and also even last year, we were able to like round her character out, flesh her out. We understand a little bit more about, you know, why she is such a, a grifter. Um, or we at least understand, we, we see another side of her that is sort of a caretaker, um, whether it's with the students or, you know, her grandmother, you know, th there are, you know, all of these characters are multifaceted. So that's also, I think, a, a huge factor in it all. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, our feeling is like, it, it is hard because like there's been a thousand Harley Quinn stories. There's, you know, there's Batman's in our show. Batman's been done a hundred thousand times, so many times. And I think for us, it's like, we try to figure out what is the interesting sort of story to tell with these characters that we haven't seen before, but also stays true to the characters, right? Like, I mean, Batman in our show is like seen through the eyes of Harley Quinn. So he's kind of a buzzkill. He's really lame and boring. And so like, we're allowed to sort of twist things because it's through the eyes of another character. Um, but I don't know, I think it, it is just like telling, it's weird to say, but telling universal stories through crazy supervillains and, and it is what's worked for us. Yeah, I, and I think like one of the things that Justin said, if I could expand on it is like really key, which is point of view, right? And there hadn't been a show 
uh, yet told from the eyes of a supervillain quite like Harley Quinn. You know, she's been many things in the series, and uh, she's she's kind of a in this series meaning like the life of the character, the ongoing comics, and and all of the media that has come out with Harley, who's considered like the fourth pillar of DC Comics. But like I, you know, it was really important to us when we pitched it. We were like, okay, yes, she's a supervillain, but she's got a heart of gold. We always kind of the elevator pitch was it's Mary Tyler Moore. If Mary Tyler Moore were a psychopath, a murderous psychopath, um, you know, it, it is like a kind of a workplace comedy at the end of the day. But also, you know, every representation of Gotham City in the past has been, you know, gothic and dour and, you know, you know, it, it just dark. Uh, but for Harley, Gotham is is a playground and we wanted it to be more, you know, neon and technicolor and fun. And uh, I think that has, uh, has, has started that that idea has kind of started to influence Harley like in the comics again and in, in other Harley centric media. So that's been really fun to see that evolution. You know, I, 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 I don't think you can ever actually satisfy <laughs> very perfect yeah. fans fully. So I think accepting that you're always going to fall short of that goal is a good place to start. But I, what I, what I found, I think both of us have found that, you know, we were able to populate the writer's room of Harley with both super fans of the IP of, you know, the, you know, the ones who are, are slavish to the canon, you know, sort of in, in their heads. And then also just funny as hell comedy writers um, who don't necessarily know uh, the first thing, you know, who, who, who might think that Captain America is actually a DC property. Um, they will learn as they go, right? It's like, uh, you know, teaching like an, uh, if you're looking for like a visual effects artist, you teach an artist how to use a computer. You don't teach like a, you know, an IT person how to be a painter. So, uh, you know, over, over time, everybody on staff it, had come to, you know, amass a certain sort of baseline knowledge of, of all the IP, but all we needed was like a, a small handful of us to, you know, push up our glasses and be like, no, that's not what happened in the book. <laughs> and that's a slap in the face of the fandom. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I think that that is how you, and, and I do think that like we ended up attracting a lot of just like comedy nerds to the show that didn't as an audience that didn't know the first thing about uh, Harley and all of these kind of like D-list super villains. You know, I think it's kind of the same ethos as like what James Gunn did with like Peacemaker and Suicide Squad, um, which is why we're very excited to have him and Peter Safran running DC. You know, I think our motto at this company is just <laughs> make shows we'd want to watch. Um, and so there's, you know, I think that anything we do, we wanted to have some levity to it. We're definitely not going to have any shows that are just like, you know, straight up dark dramas with absolutely no uh, levity to them. Um, but that said, I think that, you know, we want to watch show, we want to make shows that we watch, which are, you know, things that are, you know, we, we like, we kind of exist across a lot of different genres, you know. Harley Quinn and Abbott Elementary could not be more different shows. Um, <clears throat> and so for us, I think it's but the, the commonality between the two of them is that we we try to make them funny. <laughs> like we want them to be funny and we want you to care about the characters. And I think if we're doing that, then those are the types of shows we want to make. Yeah. And continuing to, you know, collaborate with talent like Quinta Brunson, Kaylee Cuoco, who voices Harley. Um, you know, we're developing a project around her right now. Um, yeah, so I mean that that that's a huge thing for us is 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 finding you know that that creative partner that can really sort of unlock um, you know some really whatever the secret sauce is. But I think we're we're we have fun collaborating with other people, and uh, which is pretty much all of television. 